Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Adam Myhill, and I'm the head of cinematics for Unity. And I'm Mike Weatherick. I'm a product manager with Unity. Today, we're here to talk to you about two exciting new features coming with Unity 2017.1, Timeline and Cinemachine. We're going to jump straight into a demo. So the demo assets you're about to see are from a game called Ghosts in a Tale. And it's this little mouse who gets into adventures. And we're going to show you how you can choreograph anything in Unity with Timeline, and you can shoot it with Cinemachine. The first thing we're going to show you is called Cinemachine Free Look. It's a third-person action-adventure orbit camera. It's taken us a long time to get the math right and the blending, and it gives you a lot of control. But something that's been very hard to do is to link animations with camera behaviors at least not without writing code. So we've made something that lets you do this very easily, and it's called the state-driven camera module. Let's check it out. So on the right here, I have the state-driven camera component. And as you can see, there's multiple different cameras. What we have is all the animations in your character's animator dynamically added, and then on the right is any number of free looks. So let's see how that looks. So as I move around the environment, I can go into a sneak mode, and it switches to a completely different type of camera. And then back. You can link any number of these different camera anim animations to, or cameras to animations, without using any code. So any animation can trigger any different camera. And you can see we're doing this while the game's running, and all the settings you uh, adjust are saved. So for your game, if you want to push in when a certain animation happens or pull back when uh, more enemies come up close, you can do all that. You can control the camera from any animation. It's really fast to use. So the next we want to talk about timeline. So on the bottom here is our new timeline window. So timeline allows you to sequence animations, cameras, audio, all without any needing any engineering or code. So we walk up to the trigger, we activate it, and it just transitions right into the timeline sequence and then transitions back into gameplay. You can see on the top, there's camera clips. This is gameplay camera. And then we blend into a cutscene camera. And then we blend back. Now, one of the most powerful features of Cinemachine is a procedural real-time composition control. And I'll show you how that works. You click the camera clip, and you set what target you'd like to look at. In this case, it's the mouse's eye. And then what you do is you say where on the screen you would like that to be. And instead of animating the cameras normally, you just tell Cinemachine what shot you'd like, where you'd like it to be on the screen, and the camera will do all the work. So you can see as the mouse animates, the camera's following. And this is an entirely new way of working. And what's interesting about it is you don't have to keyframe to get the results you want. And then if things change, the camera just figures it out. So it's, this, as Adam mentioned, a completely different way of working. And let's actually take a look at how this can uh, play in a larger scene. So here we have a more complete scene. We've got UI elements, we've got audio, we've got a bunch of different things happening. And using Timeline and Cinemachine will bring it to life. Look at all these tracks we have here. There's tracks for cameras, there's tracks for the character animation, audio, VFX. All of these things can be choreographed with Timeline. So timeline can choreograph any asset that you have in the game. So let's start it up and see how it goes. So again, all of this is being done without needing to do any engineering. The, having the uh, guards move around the paths, the transitioning between the shots, everything is all done with Timeline and Cinemachine. And because Cinemachine is a unified camera system, you can blend seamlessly from a cutscene straight into gameplay. So what we'll see here is the mouse little Tito runs up to the first crate. It's a traditional cutscene. We go from gameplay to a camera. We're procedurally targeting the mouse. And then the doors close, and we cut back to gameplay. 
It was easy to make, and that's a very standard way to do cutscenes. But let's do something a little bit more interesting. This one we call sculpted gameplay. You still have control. But using the free look component that we showed you earlier, we just adjusted some settings to make it look just exactly where we want the, to, the viewer to watch. And then it seamlessly blends back to gameplay. So you can do these cinematic gameplay moments, and the user still has control. So let's look at one final sequence in this project here. So we'll just run up past our guard here and have Tilo look out over the courtyard. So again, we're not keyframing cameras here. It's just blending between shot concepts. The guards are chasing the yellow balls that you can move or see moving around. And it, again, is a very different way of working. So these rats are following the yellow balls. And those have been animated. But we don't really know where the rats are. And it doesn't really matter. Because we just tell the camera which target we'd like. So Mike, go to, say, Rat B, and the camera's following him, and we don't really know where he is, and we don't really mind, because the camera's going to procedurally track that. We can go to another shot, and it will track the next character. So Mike, play this, but play it as a cut. So go back into Rat B again, right there, and hit play. We're one shot, we cut to the next guy. But watch this. You can take the clips and overlap them, and it's now not a cut, it's a blend. So we blend the target, and the camera will blend over and target the next guy. And you can set up these very elaborate scenes, and you're not actually animating the camera, you're just telling the camera what to do and when, and mixing those ideas together. It's a fun way to work, and it's very fast. Cool, to wrap it off, we're going to let Adam do a deep dive into Cinemachine, and take it away, Adam. Thanks, Mike. So we're going to bounce over to this scene. And something I'd like to share with you is that all the assets in this are available for free on the Asset Store. This is the Atom model and the environment. And you could build this right now for free. It's all available on the Asset Store. So camera composition is something that's it's hard to get right, and it can make a really big difference. Like if you look at this shot, it's not maybe the greatest shot. So you can just drag the controls and create a composition that you find pleasing. And the camera will follow that. We cut to the next shot. It's not a really great composition. We we'll just fix it. You can work so quickly, and if the characters move, or even if the scene changes, it's, it's OK. So we're doing this track shot as the character walks by. And then this is a follow shot. And watch this. I can select the camera, the Cinemachine camera, and just change how far away we'd like it. I'm just going to fix the composition on this guy a little bit, too. So we go from a, let's watch that again though. We go from this shot, well, it's a bit of a hard cut. But these are two totally different cameras, and that's okay. Like Mike showed you, you can just overlap the clips and watch what happens. I'll go back a little further. We track the shot, and then we blend from a tripod shot to a follow shot, perfectly smoothly. So you can blend any camera to any other camera. And it's so fast to work. You know, I've been building camera systems for, for many years, and you know, sometimes the difference between a good game and a great game is just the camera work. So we're taking this stuff very seriously at Unity. This is a new feature, and it's a little bit crazy. Let me show you what it does. It uses shot evaluation, and it will evaluate what's happening and if it's a good shot or not. So this is a clip, and we're calling uh, a camera, but this camera has multiple child cameras. 
Look at them here. We have this one, this one, this one, and they each have a priority. Now, if the first shot is good, we'll use it. But if it's not, it will go to the next one. So look what I've got here. I'm gonna give the cameras a little bit of trouble. We've got this wall right here. So let's see what's gonna happen. This shot says we wanna target his neck, but he's gonna walk into the wall or just behind the wall. So let's see what happens. As soon as the shot isn't good, we cut to the next best one that is good. And as soon as that shot's not good, we'll cut to the next, and I'm not doing anything. This is Cinemachine figuring out what the best shot is and cutting appropriately. Imagine if your game has got a replay and you don't know where it's happening, or a boss battle, or an intro, and there's some degree of variability. You can set the cameras up and they'll cut, and they'll always pick the best shot. We're really excited to see what people make with this. The next one is Dolly. And a dolly in the film industry is track that gets put on the ground, and then people push the camera along the track. So we've created that in Unity. You can see the track is here. And as I play, you can see on the, on the left, the camera is following the character perfectly smoothly around objects, over top and under things, whatever you wish. Oh wait, who's this guy? That's another dolly. Let's show this one. This dolly is being animated from timeline. See this green line here? That's just pushing the camera along. So watch what this does. The camera's coming in on this big track, and it's moving in. Now, the composition was good at the start, but once it plays a little bit, it's not very good anymore. Watch how easy it is to fix that. We just select the camera, we hit record on timeline, we fix the composition, and then we say, let's put him here. We get to here and let's put him, put him a little higher on screen. Like this, and so on. We get to the end. I want to put him in the center of the screen. I turn off record. Watch what happens. And as this plays, timeline is driving the composition of Cinemachine. But what's crazy about this is we're still procedurally targeting the character. So if you were to walk faster or be a smaller guy, it would still work. So that is something that we are excited to get into your hands. Now, there's one more thing that I'd like to show you. And that is our new post effects. It's called the post processing stack. And it is world class. It has got incredibly powerful color grading tools. Watch this. Let me just get a little bit closer to this guy. See on the right, this is a wave four monitor and it will adjust and show you the mixture of colors that are in your scene. You can adjust these per shot. You can have them on every camera and change them as needed. We also have a new bloom system, which is really cool. It has a very filmic look. I'm gonna turn this up. We can even put some dirt on the lens. Oh, that's too much. And something about our color grading tools that are so powerful, and it's a little bit hidden, but it's in here. And we've got these different graphs, and what they can do is very powerful. So we can do hue versus saturation, and that gives a curve that relates uh, a color to a saturation value. So look at his red pants, those are probably a little too red. 
I can just take a keyframe that's in the red section and pull it down. And I'm just adjusting the red. So you can fine tune and really, really, um, really, really take uh, control of the frame in a color way. You've got other controls too, like hue versus hue. And maybe the art director would like the red pants to be a slightly different color, or maybe the grass wants to be a little bit more yellow. Imagine having this control in every single shot. That's fantastic. So we, we can't wait to see what, what you create with this. And uh, these tools are available now. Time, these uh, Cinemachine and the post-processing stack are going into um, Unity 2017.1. And they're available in the asset store now. And it is my honor to introduce Kane Lee from Baobab Studios. Thank you so much.